What up, infidels? It's time for another Freddy Soto interview. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, for those of you who knew the podcast, uh, five years ago, I did five interviews about uh, a great deceased comedian named Freddy Soto, just trying to get to know more about him. Um, and if you go through my previous episodes, you'll see I have the Freddy Soto interviews. If you're on my YouTube, they're on their own separate sort of, uh, not channel, but category in my channel, playlist in my channel, the Freddy Soto interviews. So check it out. Um, this is the fourth in a series of five, and this one with, is with comedian Bobby Lee. Um, you may know him from Mad TV. He's one of my favorite comedians at the Comedy Store. Um, and yeah, his inter- his relationship with Freddie was really interesting, and he goes into that here in this episode. So enjoy, guys. Again, this was recorded five years ago with no video, so if you're watching on YouTube, you'll get a still screen. But uh, yeah, this is the Freddie Soto interview with Bobby Lee. Where do I go? Anywhere? Anywhere. We got up. Can you close the door though? I need I need privacy. You need privacy. I got it. I need privacy because I can't do podcasts when it's like that. All right. All right. So, um, what is your obsession with Freddie Soto? Um, so I saw him when I was in middle school. I saw his Comedy Central event. Yeah. And at the time, nobody was talking about what he was talking about. Yeah. And I saw immigrant families. That's something I connected to, and he was just funny. Yeah. And then I looked him up. And then this is about a month after he died. So he had just died recently. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, that's crazy, right? Like, And then just over my course of comedy, he's been on this like peripheral. Like I hear stories about him from like older comics all the time, but I have no idea. And a lot of my like door guys my age, no idea who he is. Yeah. So I was just like... It's a shame because um, I had never seen anyone destroy a room like him. I mean, when he clicked... One day he was okay as a comic, and then I think he was on the road with Mencia, Carlos Mencia or something, and he learned something, came back into town, and then he was a destroyer. I've never seen anyone kill a room like him, and it's it's a big loss, really, to comedy. And it's, it is a shame that nobody really knows right now who he is, because he was just too young. He was young, and it you know he reminds me of a little bit, like Mitch Mullaney is the same thing. Mitch Mullaney was relatively young and didn't quite make it yet and he passed and when that happens it's fucking because they're also friends and whatnot and now freddie and i have had a fucked up past yeah you already know about it kind of what is it what do you know all i know is that you at least all that eleanor told me that you guys were beefing for years i don't know for years she said something about you thought he was gonna he's trying to kick you out of show business (laughs) <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the extent of what Why? Well, so here's what I started in '95. Right. 1995. I was in the La Jolla Comedy Store. That's where I started. Same here. And I was working the door there. And one day I met Mitzi's driver, who was Freddie. And this is when Mitzi Shore was walking around and she was coherent and running the business. And she used to have this brown limousine. And Freddie drove around, drove her down to San Diego and whatnot. It was also. A stand-up. He was doing open mics and whatnot. And I met him that way, and we became friends instantly. In fact, a guy that you should have on this podcast is Johnny Sanchez. Because it was I met Johnny Sanchez and um, Freddie around the same time, and we all used to hang out you know, when I was living down there. And um, this story is going to get a little... Because I have different ideas about why him and I didn't get along eventually, but th- ideas that nobody's really ever really talked about. So this is what had happened. And Eleanor doesn't know this. People don't know this. But one day, Mitzi was driving down from L.A. to La Jolla, and she decided to fire everyone at the comedy store and only keep a couple of doormen. And she's got going to fire... Um, Ron Clark, Fred Burns, the whole wait staff that had been there since the 80s. Everybody. And at that time, those people were my peer group. Fred Fred Burns was the manager. He had discovered me at Open Mic. I was La Jolla? La Jolla, yeah. I used to live underneath him in a house that Scott Shore, Pauly Shore's brother, owned. And, you know, he was my, the first guy to ever, like, give me hope. Right? right, you need those in comedy. You need a show that you kill at that gets you hooked, 
but also sometimes you need a mentor or somebody. So, someone to believe in. right. And Fred was the first one to do that. And so when Mitzi was saying that she's going to fire anybody, in retrospect, from how I see it in now, Freddie didn't do anything wrong. But at the time, I got mad at Freddie because he didn't defend us. So imagine Mitzi's in the limo, they're driving down from L.A. Right. She says this crazy thing, and I, I thought that Freddie should have said, no, they're, they've been working, they're honest, you know, whatever. She just wanted to switch it up. I don't know what her ideas yeah. about anything was. And so when Fred, that night, because she stayed at the condo, she had her own condo by the condo that the comic stay in, and me and Freddie were in the condo, one, three or four in the morning, and we got in a fight. Because I said, you should have defended us. And he goes, you don't know Missy, you don't know what she's like. And that, and that was the fight. And ever since then, we never were the same. Really? Yeah. So then when I first, then when I moved, moved to LA, there was real conflict. Like imagine he's already up here, he's a regular, this and that, I'm a fucking doorman. And, he, you know, he made it a little difficult for me. Um, you know, one time he was in the main room and he said, "Get you know, get him out of the room in front of the audience. Really? Yeah, called me out in front of the audience. And it really hurt me. Um, like I said, I, I should have handled that situation differently, you know, in the past. But, you know, I did what I did. And I, I'm also, um, I'm a, I, I cause a lot of conflicts. <laughs> I mean, I've been known to like help people, but I've also been known to like. There's just been these little wars that I, I start with my big mouth. I think. And it's it's a character defect that I, I wish I could change about myself, you know. Yeah. And, so him and I were. Not good, and, but I you know, what 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 would happen is I would go and sneak into rooms, to watch him perform. So even in that time, you were able to separate like your ill feelings to him towards like, oh, I gotta watch him as a. Comedian. I had no ill feelings toward him. Okay. It I I thought he was the shit. I really did. I thought he was the next guy up. Another thing that I did, which is a fucking a newcomer mistake, is he had gotten Friday night videos. It's some sort of back then that was the thing to get on as a young comedian. It was on NBC late Friday night. Okay. And he came up to me, this is before the fight, and he said, I think this is what started a little bit of the conflict, was he goes, oh, I just got Friday Night Videos. Instead of saying congratulations, I said, how'd you get that? I want that. You know that whole thing? Yeah. And what I should have said was, what the fuck? What the fuck just happened? Dude, that's crazy. All right. Oh, my God, is Freddie here? That would be insane. Is there someone in here? Yeah, I just saw the manager what pop in. Oh my god, do you under do you have no? He came. He knows that we're in here now. Okay. I literally thought that was the ghost of Freddie. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised knowing this place. That's what it felt like. It felt. He like... was the best. I'd suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean he. So, so I came up here. I would sneak into rooms and to watch him because he would. I've never seen anyone just annihilate a room. Off jokes alone or what? Like, no, just, just his style. jokes. His, He was just so real in the way he did his, especially his family material, mm -hmm. that it was just, and no one had really seen that. Right. So he just obliterated every night, and it was so fun to watch. And was he getting, like, the good spots? or was He, he was, was, yeah. Okay. He was getting the good spots, good manager. He was, he was on his way. And then um, he started getting on TV, Tonight Show, whatnot. He did a movie, Adam Sandler movie, yeah. Spanglish. He um, went up to Aspen, I know that, and he did some stuff for them. And he was literally on his way. And then at that point, I got mad TV. So then this is what happened. So I got mad, and then all of a sudden, like I'm just kind of doing my own thing, and then him and I just started talking. And then one day, I, s I get a call from my agent and said, hey, you got invited to perform at the Maui Film Festival and you're going to do it with Freddie. I go, is Freddie okay with that? And my manager's, my agent said, yeah, we cleared it by him. So my brother and I, Freddie, 
his wife, um, Corey, and then um, his baby. He had, his baby had just been born. Okay. We went to Hawaii together, and we did this show. And we hung out, and it seemed like it was going to get to a place where it was going to be fine. After all these years. And then I was doing a show in San Francisco with um, Steve Byrne, Ken Jung, oh, wow. and we were driving back from San Francisco. We drew, took, you know, we wanted to take the scenic route. And I got the call that he had passed. Who called you? I don't remember. Because I remember pulling over, having Steve Byrne pull over, and I just went to the side of the road and I just stared out. Into I just remember just being completely blindsided by it, and then I remember calling Carlos because he hadn't he didn't know, and then I went to his in the main room they had a um, memorial, and I snuck in the back. Yeah, I heard you were told not to come. Yeah, I was told not to come. <laughs> it's so it's so fucking funny if you think about it. It's ridiculous, you know, but I went in the back. And as soon as they sh- showed his baby pictures, I mean, I just fucking, it was the worst. Because we weren't there yet. We weren't, you know, we were going to get there. I always get there with people, you right. know. I had things with Ari. I had things with Eleanor. I've, I've had things. I've always been able to, through time, mend it, you know. And I wasn't really fully able to do that with Freddie. So it's like sort of like a, um, like a thread that's been left over. A little bit. I think that because Eleanor was – the reason why Eleanor really at the end of the day didn't like me is because Freddie didn't. And so now F- Eleanor text each other, and, and you know, we, we were friends, right? right? Mm-hmm. I didn't talk to her for 20 fucking years. Wow. That's how deep this got, where the divi- divisions were so deep that we didn't talk for like a long, 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 long time. And I, I, I never, ever talked to her before. As soon as I moved to LA, that th- we we had a beef. So, Eleanor was always just on his team. Right, and that, so that beef lasted all those years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I just made up. I just started talking to Eleanor like seven months ago. Wow. For not talking to this lady for twenty years. Wow. And now we're like pushing each other and texting and you know we're doing things and it's feel it feels great. Were there like were there in that long time between that you and Freddie were beefing, were there like, like attempts to mend the bridge, or were you guys just like this? Is I think I think cool. when I got mad, TV, he softened a bit because he's. I mean, I don't know what his intentions were, but maybe I'd quit or whatever. But you know, I'm never gonna. I'm not going anywhere. Right. And um, there's a lot of those things here still today. I mean, I just talked to a guy upstairs. Who's a regular here? And I'm not gonna name names, but he said, "Is so and so here?" Who's another comic? I go. He goes, "I hate him." Right. So that I mean that that's always g- gonna be there. I mean, when you put, you know, a bunch of comics in a room, not everyone's gonna get along. Right. I mean, there were th- there are, there are certain comics. It took me years to even get them to even respect me a little bit. Like Mark Marin, I thought, like I had to say, stop doing that. Right, right. Like Stop, you know, saying that I'm a dancing m- monkey. That you know, you know, give me proper intros. Oh wow, that's crazy. You have to do that. Yeah. You know, you have to tell. Like, there's, you know, there are comics where you have to sit there and go. And then I've had comics come up to me and go, "Hey, I don't like this or that, and can you stop doing that?" So it's just, it's life. You go to any job, there's conflict, right? It's hard to be in a conflict with somebody that's so talented, though. Especially, like, I felt like, it, you know, I, I didn't grow up in a show business background, either did Freddie. I grew up in a really immigrant house. My parents didn't speak any English. My parents were working class. They don't know what Hollywood is. They don't have any connections whatsoever to anyone even in L.A. really. So when you're starting from an open mic, you know, been, we're from La Jolla, right? Yeah. 
imagine like you start, you sign up for the open mics, and then you have to go from there to television. How does that work? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a, almost an insurmountable like obstacle. Right, it's daunting to say the least. It's like, oh, this is gonna take a long fucking time, <laughs> which it did. But anyone listening, you just can't quit. I mean, now you know. Right now, I'm on a couple of things, and you know, I, I got another show that I picked up on ABC, and you know, I'm doing anyway. I'm doing a couple of th other things, but those things did not come easy. I'm now I can because you know you put on all that work. Yeah, and the the thing with Freddie is is that he should have been like Chappelle level. I really, really oh yeah. Really, you put that on him. He's he was really here's the thing though, is is that he can embody like he should have been on a sketch show. Like when Johnny Sanchez I met with him and Freddie and Freddie had passed and then when when Matt T V was looking for a Hispanic guy, I mean the next guy in line was Johnny. I got him on the show. I mean I helped him audition. We walked through that whole process, he got the show. Freddie could have done that. You know, Freddie could have done a lot of things. And um, yeah, I'm, here's, the th here's another thing. I don't want to get in trouble because I don't want to... I have to word it. Right, and hold on, hold on. I don't know how he died, really. I know that he fell asleep mm -hmm. at a friend's house on a couch, right? Right. And his heart stopped. Yeah, well, yeah, Wikipedia has a certain, like, a cocktail of things that he took. Right. Yeah. I mean, my what I t was told, what, what I, is Ambien and cocaine. Um, I know cocaine wasn't a part of it. That was sort of an urban legend that had sort of popped up around the scene that it was cocaine. But uh -huh. Wikipedia is, from what I got from Wikipedia, and Elmer says it wasn't cocaine either, either. But from what I got from Wikipedia was fentanyl, yeah. alcohol, and a Xanax, and Xanax. Okay. Yeah. And then his heart stopped. Because the thing, the thing is, is that G Freddie and I, um, we both struggled with that. You know, I know that he was sober for a long time. When I met him, he was sober, and I was sober. I mean, 12 stopping it. I have 15 years now, okay. right? So, yeah, I've always been in and out of that thing, you know? And um, I just wish that maybe we had a better relationship because then maybe at that time, I don't know, man, there's nothing I can do about it, but, you know, I just wish that I would have been able to say, hey, man, stop. You know, I mean, like you're, you have a baby. You know, I don't know how hard he's been. It was partying. He might not have been partying that hard. I don't know, but I think about it sometimes. You know, but yeah, he. Ah, God, man. And I'm not with Corey too. His wife, like as act. I mean, I I don't have any relationship with her either. And uh, um, even like the benefit shows that they did afterwards, I was never invited to those things. And I mean, I like to get involved, but um, it's just a weird. It's 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 weird that it's been this long, you know. Yeah, it's been a long time. And this topic is something that I've always, you know, been afraid to even look at because you know it's there's just so much history there and, and a lot of anger and resentment. What's something that he would do when you came here that made it harder for you? I mean, these are things that are things that I imagined in my mind okay, that, that aren't factual. Lot. So, like, at that time, I thought I wasn't getting spots because his wife was the talent coordinator. Mm. Right? Imagine, you know, having a beef with a comic. And his wife books the club that you work at. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you don't get spots. That's not true. You're going to think. Yeah, that's the first thing. So it was that. And then as soon as Duncan came in, it was fine for me. Duncan Trussell. Yeah. You know, he was a talent coordinator. Yeah, that's what I heard. He was a talent coordinator before. For years. That's crazy. 
before he even did stand up. How long? Four or five years. Four or five years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, I when Duncan came in, I was like, ah, oh, thank God, because it, it still I didn't get spots, but you know, in my head, I'm like, it's not that; it's my talent or whatever. Right. I think Mad TV helped me get spots and stuff, but um, but like I said, dude, it's like we we were good, you know. At the end, I remember being on a plane with him. I remember talking to him. We did the show together. I remember Zach Braff being there. It was fun. It was a fun weekend. And then he he died. How long? Uh, this fucking uh, months later. Yeah, it was crazy. And um. Yeah, I wish, I don't know, man. I just wish things were a little different, you know? The thing with this is that th there's so much at stake in your head because you, you, you sacrifice. You put all, I put all my eggs in this basket. Right. I don't believe in, you know, fall back. I have a degree. I can manage a hotel if this doesn't work out. I didn't have that. No, it was all or nothing. Yeah, and I believe that it uh, should always be like that. I'd rather die poor than give it up. It's really weird. That makes sense. But so when that's at stake, you know, you might react differently to certain situations. If it wasn't comedy, maybe it would have been different. But... um yeah, it was survival, dude. Also, at that time, you have to understand that comedy, this comedy store wasn't what it is now. So it wasn't popping like it is now. It's the opposite of popping. It was the worst room in America. <laughs> That's fun. It really was. It's yeah, like you couldn't get anyone in here. Yeah, and the room itself is hard on top of that. It's a hard enough as it is, yeah. And then you would show up and get a spot and not go up, no matter what time it is, because... You had like six dudes with heavy credits that would bump you. Yeah. And they could just, you know, if you had fame in this club, you could just go, I'm next. And you can go on for as long as you want. Yes. That doesn't exist anymore. No. I mean, I know big names I can't even get on. Yeah. Which uh, is great. Famous people have trouble getting into Yeah. Place, so, but cool. back then, if you had a name and you were from the store, but if you had no credits, good fucking luck, man. It was run by fucking the insane. Yeah. You know? But it was fun, though. I mean, you would, <laughs> you would be able to, you know, you know, pull a girl off, you know, and do things. And oh, yeah. That's, all, that's incredibly hard to do. Now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we would just fuck all, you know, all these rooms. And there was no, like, there was no boss. <laughs> you know? And that's why, you know, people can behave the way they can you know, back then. It was weird because when Freddie and uh, when uh, Dice went up the other night, it just reminded me of what it was. You know, you would go, I'm going next. And you would do five hours. That's Crazy. Yeah. Did it ever get physical between you and Freddie? Yeah, that night when I uh, first initially, we pushed each other and stuff like that. But Freddie and I would never get to that point. It's just a shame that he fucking, he was so good. Anyone listening... Here's the thing is, is that, you know, you, you can do an impression of your dad, but I've never been able to become my dad. Mm. It's just a voice, right? Right. But what he used to do is he became that guy. And he literally, his veins would pop out of his head, right? His body would change on stage, his voice, everything. And so it was extremely believable. And, and 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 that was his the the centerpiece of his comedy, which is was his dad. It, it doesn't matter because there was so much truth there. Yeah. Right. But um, and he could have evolved into something else. I mean, he did rednecks really good too, and gay guy. I mean, he he was just really good at doing characters and embodying. Anchored in his family. Yeah, it was ankled, a a anchored in his El Paso dad, and you know, believing growing up there, and um, God, it's amazing. It's a shame, man. It really is. So I mean, obviously, so you snuck in the memorial. Did anyone see you there, or were you? I didn't go to the um the funeral service. I came to the main room. The main room. I did that. No, I was. It was packed. Okay, so you. I mean, it was sta It wasn't standing room only. Everyone was there. 
Yeah. And yeah. Everyone would, was giving speeches. Everyone was oh, the worst was when Eleanor and Corey were on stage. Oh my God, it was fucking heartbreaking. I remember. I mean, it was. And it snuck out, and I just I laughed, and I just remember just just feeling um, like it wasn't fully. I wasn't fully there with them. You know. You felt outside of it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, uh, Marilyn, uh, Marlon, Marilyn Martinez. I don't. You probably never know, know who she is, no, but I've heard them. yeah. I mean, you, you, you just you, you just run into these people, and they're they you become friends, and you see all the talent, and then when they're gone, it's like it's fucking it's tough. Yeah, life just happens like that. Yeah, it's it's fucking tough, but you know, guys like you, and you know his. You know, he, uh, hopefully he, he'll get recognized. Right, hopefully there's some hope out there for... Him. Yeah, but he's just not, he's just not. And that's the thing. It's like, it's not, it's not, nobody knows who he is. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, uh, from what I see, he seemed to die at like a terrible time where his body of work was just beginning instead of having... Like, and, he, and another sad thing is, is that, you know, he he wasn't able to take advantage of the new mediums. Like... You know, my podcast did so much for me. Right. They weren't around then, mm -hmm. right? But, like, who knows what he would have been able to do, if you he know? Had that right, or, or all the other mediums, you know? I mean, just, you know, he, tr I know that he did a pilot about his family. It was NBC or something. Mm -hmm. It didn't get picked up, but I think it would have, you know, when the Netflix and all these other things that have sprung up. He would have definitely got something on the air, you know. So, you know, when you see, I mean, there's such a disconnect between Hollywood and what goes on at at, at a club level. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. You know, they 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 they're busy, but that's why they have agents to tell them, "Oh, my guy." Right. But. If you were just go to the clubs, you could see. What you could see, but then that's one factor, and a lot of it is looks, and youth, and that's all other bullshit, you know. But um, but Freddie would have just didn't take advantage of this, you know. It's it's a shame, you know. But um, I, what about you? Did Dorman? They don't know him. Uh, no, not really. Not my. When I asked people, like. Cause I just started asking random people, hey, what do you know about Freddie San uh, Freddie Soto? And the only thing that they'll ever say is, ah, uh, I heard Mincy had stole from him. That's the only thing they ever really know about him. I mean, you know, I I'm not I'm not here to defend Mencia. Right. But the thing that Mencia, the one good thing he did was, he, you know, I, that's where I started. Right. Freddie and I started under the Carlos Mencia camp, where we went on the road with him. And, yeah, I mean, it, it, does he steal? I mean, those are things that we've people have talked about over the years. And, oh, yeah, yeah. and he does, you know, I mean, I'm not going to state the obvious. Mm -hmm. But the one good thing that he did do was he, he took guys that were, he thought, were good, you know. And he, and Freddie definitely got better by opening for him. Right. Um, did Carlos steal from him? I don't know what bits. I'm sure he did. Mm -hmm. But that is the one good thing. Because I remember one day, Freddie was okay. He did a weekend with N Ned, Carlos. And then he was a completely different guy. Really? Like it snapped or something happened, you know? Maybe it was like over a, a month or whatever. But like something had definitely happened. Right, he figured it out a little bit? He 100% figured it out a lot. Yeah. Did that happen for you? Did you have a moment where everything just sort of clicked? No. No. Um, you know who else had, was like that? It was Sebastian. Right. Maniscalco. Mm. When I first saw him, it was unwatchable. Because I saw him the first time he went up. In fact, I was on the tape that he has. Really? I was the host. That's funny. Yeah. And, yeah, it was not good. But then you could see him click one day and go, ah, you know, that's it. That's, and that, that's what happened with Freddie that one weekend. Yeah. But he, he went from okay to amazing. Wow. 
and it was fun to watch. I mean, you see that a lot, but then you see I've got I I feel like I'm I don't want to talk about me, but you know. So if you were able to say anything that day in the main room, if you were able to, you know, what would you say? If you were able to get up on that. Um, I would say that he was a gigantic influence on me because a little bit of the competitiveness did a lot for me. It made me bitter a little bit and it made me like aggravated, but also made me motivated. Right. So whatever was going on with my head. So in many ways, he challenged me in that way because I, I'm still honestly, I mean, I can crush and I'm, I can do kill. Right. But I still, I don't think that I'm, I'm there as, as where he was. Really? Yeah, I don't. Because he had something that was like, there's something intrinsically funny about him, you know, that he had found as, you know, can I act? I can. Can I do panel shows? I can. Can I do stand? I can do everything. But I, you know, to, to see that kind of obliter to obliterate an audience like that, I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe I I don't know. I can't see, you know. But yeah, that's how I feel. And you know, he is a hu- he he he's also when you're from San Diego and you see a guy like a friend of yours get on TV and that I saw him on TV. I was like it's possible. I don't know, but it's possible. You go, oh, you can get on TV. You can be in movies. When you see guys do it, have you ever been there? No, not yet. No one, no one that you know. Yeah, we're still on the. I'm still, you know, I've only been doing this for like four years, so we're still on the young end of. Yeah. Me and my crew, you know. Who's your crew? Stephen Fury. Um, we started door guying together. Um, the people I like hang out with most are uh, the. Derek, who's the guy in the lot right now, and mm-hmm. Trey Stewart, we're roommates. Ah, oh, I like Trey. Yeah, Trey's great. And then uh, there's this girl named Taylor Tomlinson. She like hosts laughs. Uh huh. Like, that's like my crew from San. And Brian Simpson, he used to be a door guy here. That's like my crew from San Diego. From San Diego. Yeah. When you started there, um, you worked there. I worked there for a year. What was that like? Um, it was nothing like this. It was a lot of. Uh, I don't think the management really likes comedy that much down there. They're not like big comedy fans. Um. So it's it's a it's a tough place to work. Yeah. Yeah, it's not as fun as here is. Yeah, yeah. When I I was lucky because when I started there, it was run by comics. Mm. Like Fred Burns was a comic. Oh, okay. That's. What and we had this thing. The reason why? Do you, can you do this in La Jolla, where if you work the door on Friday and Saturday, you get to go up? Uh, they have one guy cold open. Yeah, on Friday and Saturday. So one guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's usually so. There's four shows. So there'll usually be two or three guys that open. Right, so that's what we had. We had, I worked Saturday nights. Mm-hmm. Me and Stan Simmons worked the door. He could either close the first one or second one. I mean, open the first one or second one. That's how I met Carlos, and that's how I met Polly and everybody, was that opportunity. You need that opportunity. Oh, that's how I got this job here, because everyone knew me from opening for that. Right. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. That's, the the comedy store is the best at that, and it's like, you can never lose that. Right. About this club. Yes, the, so that's why this is the best club. Yeah. Anyway, rest in peace, Freddie. I love you, and um, it's a shame, you know. Is that enough, or? Yeah, that's enough. Are you sure? Oh yeah, hundred percent. 